Hello, this is not a spring chicken. If you're watching this, well, we're busy in meetings over at Digital Hollywood, and it does happen to be LA's Fashion Week. But the big news today is they found out ways to create 40,000 new jobs in Chicago. Of course, um, they are increasing taxes on the Chicago mercantile with transaction fees, and well, I think it's going to end up with a net job loss. Well, for now, we're going to bring old Kim on with comments on the headlines of today. <laughs> so, the Chicago Mercantile and their 25% what transaction fee. Oh, yeah. I mean, okay. Here's the thing is, since the state of Chicago, okay, since Obama became president, and they weren't able to get the money from the government that they thought they were going to get, the, the Illinois has done nothing but raise taxes. With every tax raise on the businesses, this is what happened to all the businesses. But, uh, and they're going to create 40,000 new jobs with the newest tax in the city of Chicago and raise nearly $2 billion for keep teachers and firemen and police officers at work because Republicans won't pass the job bill. And, and, there, and then another one, one of, of Axelrod, there has never in history been any documented proof that if you raise taxes it reduces in job loss. I'll go to Illinois. So, <laughs> go to come to California. You know, I mean, I don't know where they get their their figures. They got some guy that basically, I, he's a college professor, and he read a book that says it doesn't happen. That's their. That's where they get their stuff. He read a book. I bet the trick is, what did they say about George Bush? What he read a book. Uh huh. And there, and this, the Democrats have all read a book. They said they read books on it. They're all saying, well, they've read a book while well, they were in, you know, sorry. And they also wrote a book. Well, I think Bush has wrote three books. Oh, is that what it well, is? Yeah, Bush, for a matter of people of fact, his educational level was higher than that of Al Gore. Uh, yeah, uh -huh. they, they might. He, instead of being Mr. Dumb President, they said he was actually one of the smarter presidents this nation's ever had. Mm. Intellectually, he's up there, folks. Yeah. He just does things in his manner to make you think he's not. I know. And so as not to intimidate them. Yeah. <laughs> Indy Indy Car go, going through challenges with the um, fatal accident with Dan Weldon. I know. Uh, well, this is what we're trying to figure out. Okay, we have we we cover Indy Car on a sporadic basis, but we can guarantee you that I I stand near track doors and they'll say, you know, like like it's the most god awful, brilliant. You know, precision driving I've ever seen in my life. You know, they're traveling like at 140 miles an hour in a line, one behind one another. Nobody passes. No one. It's just basically, it's just, it's just great driving. It's just like you were watching a professional stunt team going around the track. Because no one passes. Because they can't pass in most any. You can pass only on a few racetracks in this country that are wide enough. But what happened was, is that the, one of the tough... Indy basically is changing all his cars to make certain that they can't have, you know, act, it's going to make it really boring. So they put the last race of the year on a track that they knew that was probably going to have an accident. Oh. All of the drivers, Patrick, uh, the guy at Wheaton that basically got killed. Or Weldon? Weldon, and, and which actually, which is, is, a, is a example of what's wrong with the... Uh, with the car racing, there's nothing wrong with the racing, it's just nobody has any money because Weldon, who's one of the top drivers in the last decade, couldn't get a ride this year and he's got two IndyCar wins. I know! I two mean, five, he, he, Two 500 wins and the champions. That and should have been a shoe-in. Because uh, there's no money out there, folks, and, and rejiggering the cars to, to fix the, any problems that they had is going to uh, simply cost more driving, cost more companies to shut down. And in fact, the car had nothing the uh, construction of the car had nothing to do because if you look at the pictures, he got hit in the head with a tire. Wasn't his come off of another vehicle that everybody walked away with this minor scrapes, bruises, and aches and pains. Except for him. But him, because he just happened to be, they showed it flying over, I think, Paul Tracy's car, who we've met, and the wheel coming off another thing and going right, and then you go, Basically, I, my guess he is broke his neck. he broke his neck and he yeah. was killed instantly with a broken neck, but you can't prevent that. Unless yeah. they, unless they, okay, I, I drew an era when they actually had tops over the Indy cars. Yeah. But they took those tops off so they could have a better view. My guess is they're probably going to go back to, to uh, put the tops on. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, expect some changes. I mean, part of it is, is 
If you're gonna get hit by a car going how fast? I mean. Yeah, and those people all survived. I mean, they did. That, uh, that's the they amazing did a full part. full speed hit of you know 15 cars taken out. Ended the IndyCar season with you know they <clears throat> they basically the, the the leader lost his championship because they just put it. He didn't finish the race because he was knocked out. So therefore, they did it by the. Uh, people whose position they were in. So I mean, when you win the championship, basically it should have been dis disqualified. When a championship is given to you because the race is canceled, that's not that's not how it's supposed to go. No, oh, it's just the whole thing was sad. Yeah. And strike hit grease heads. Oh wait, it's Tuesday. So what must be going up? Oh, the real estate market always goes up to record amount. We are seeing consumer confidence in buying houses at a level we have not seen for years. There is confidence among the builders that they're going to, we're going to start our building. They didn't, they aren't building. They said, we're going to start up building again. And that people are, buy, people are making loans to buy homes like they have not seen in years. No, they're not. None of the above. Because by Thursday, they'll redact everything. Consumer confidence on homes is down. I mean, I, I hate, I'm going to, I get that. We don't have little Rex here, which is worships Obama, but I can guarantee you they just made the announcement just a few minutes ago foreclosures are up. Oh. People are not paying. People behind at least three months on their bills on homes are up and loans are down. So I, I guess without thinking, somebody in the industry basically blew the lid on the fact that confidence can't be up and homes are down. And strike hit Greece heads to stand still ahead of crucial vote. Well, yeah, they're um, they're going to vote to raise taxes again. They basically this is like the third time in three weeks they voted. Okay, we're going to charge the tourists a special fee to come to Greece to see our properties. Which we do not go. Mm -hmm. We're going to uh, take away all the we're going to take away all the benefits and make the people retire at sixty six. That's not going to fly. We're going to increase the taxes on all the businesses in the country. They're going to go pie by. We're going to take that millionaire that we do have left in Greece, and we're going to make him pay his just amount of money. Mm -hmm. So there, it's heading for default number four, twice in the last month. Wow. Yeah. And global day of rage, mostly peaceful. Rome cleared. No, it wasn't peaceful. Everywhere, everywhere in the country. There's people in the world. Those people were arrested for destruction. For, I mean, like they're. Oh, here's a good one. They're starting to find out the mainstream press. Well, his father is a multi-billionaire. Her mother left her at a trust fund for two or three hundred million dollars. Most of the people that are striking have college degrees, and didn't use any of them. Most of them never even looked for a job. They've discovered that they're not looking for jobs. They're wanting, and they're all fat cats. This is the way it was. I mean, okay, I guarantee you there was an article written about the, about the 60s being revisited. And the product, okay, who is running our country? Who? Those people from the 60s. Oh, yeah. Who is running Wall Street? Oh, yeah. Those people from the 60s. <laughs> and who is protesting about, those pe about uh, what's going on on Wall Street and the government? Oh, yeah. The children and the grandchildren of the people from the 60s. Oh, yeah. Isn't that amazing? And <laughs> well, actually, what they did was they hauled out their parents' old worn signs, you know, that basically they, you know, smelling of marijuana and other drugs and whatever else they were doing, and then went and put their old parents' clothes on. Like they said, they stunk to begin with, and when they put them on, they didn't have them changed in a month. Oh, I know. Is that that global day of rage? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> SEC wrestling with conflict materials disclosure. Yeah, because if they disclose too much, Obama gets in trouble. <laughs> That's what they're talking about. The Obama administration has got so much conflict of interest on a lot of its loans that basically he's in violation of so many laws. <laughs> it's unreal. And New York Times sues the Obama administration over the Patriot Act. Yeah, because they want to. Uh, they want to get that information on. That they want, according to the law, they have to be supplied with the information on what they, you know, this terrorist plot that they broke up to kill all these people in Washington D.C. and United and New York. There isn't any information, folks. That's why they're not. They got to fight them in court. And a Monty bubbleism from the Mark Twain of the animal kingdom. I know. Well, sometimes you know you're not as old as you think you are when 
after you've climbed over a wall to get out of the parking lot, uh, a much younger young lady behind you asks you how old you are, and when she finds out, she then goes over the wall herself because she doesn't want to look stupid. 